Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another word for today with Ray. And before we begin, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, here we sit again, a fresh new day, a fresh mind, Lord, a fresh heart, ready to receive from our God. And Lord, as you lay open your word to our hearts and minds, our eyes and our ears today, I pray that we will receive from you everything that you want us to know and to live in this life. I pray by your Holy Spirit, you will guide us into all truth and empower us to live in ways that are pleasing unto you and will give you thanks for doing so in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is The Just Shall Live by Faith and it's taken from the book of Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11. Once again, we have come to one of those verses in the Bible that has had a tremendous impact upon the lives of many individuals and it turned the church world upside down through Martin Luther as it launched the Protestant Reformation. Paul the Apostle has been persuading the church members of Galatia for some time that the grace of God is the impetus for salvation and not the keeping of the law. Because people could not obey the law of God perfectly, God sent his only son Jesus to live a perfect life and then pay the price for the sins of those who didn't. Faith in Jesus' death on the cross and subsequent resurrection from the dead was all that was required for a relationship with God. And any addition to this was only returning to the curse associated with the law. Paul sums up his conclusion in chapter 3 and verse 11 of the book of Galatians, where we read, But that no man is justified by the law of God in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Paul said first, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. We should remember that whenever we see the word but in the Bible, it is considered a disassociation conjunction, which means that which was previously stated takes less pre precedence than what is about to be said. Paul wrote in our last verse, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written on the ball, book of the law to do them. But and then he writes, But we should pay particular attention to it. Paul says that it is obvious that there is no one who is justified by the law of God in his sight. The reason is simple. No one keeps the law. Because there is a curse associated with not keeping the law, then everyone is under this curse. In simple terms, not only the church members of Galatia were in trouble, but we are as well. It is evident that unless there is a different plan, we are all doomed to be under the curse of the law. But alas, therein lies God's solution. Paul says, for the just shall live by faith. Paul employs a quote from the book of Habakkuk in chapter 2 and verse 4 to give the answer to our dilemma. Habakkuk was dismayed at the way God was handling the wickedness that was throughout the land of Judah. As he poured out his complaint to God, God showed him that he was going to use the Assyrians as agents of justice. This startled Habakkuk because the Assyrians in Habakkuk's mind were worse than the people of Judah. After appealing to God once again and watching to see how God would answer, Habakkuk concluded the just shall live by his faith. Paul employs these words to suggest the superiority of the faith of an individual over keeping the law of God. By substitutionary sacrifice, Jesus Christ kept the law, died for the penalty of the law, and was raised from death, which defeated the curse of the law. And now for those who will simply trust in, have faith in, rely upon, and cling to his finished work, they shall be saved. In other words, the just shall live by faith. How do we live? Do we live by trying to keep the law of God, or do we live by faith? If we were to be judged as just, would it be based upon our obedience to keeping the laws of God or by faith in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ? The danger in not living by faith and attempting to live by the law is that should we obtain any success in keeping the law, at best we would have self-righteousness. And self-righteousness is not enough to have a relationship with God. 
As we consider the words of Paul today, may our introspection lead us to accept and appreciate the marvelous sacrifice of Jesus Christ the Savior and realize that we cannot improve upon the way he has made for all who will simply believe. Next time, we will see the difference between the just living by faith and keeping the law. So read ahead and let us join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word in Jesus' name.